you just keep coming to church just as you are, but the promise is you're not going to stay the way you are because the same God that delivered me is the same God that will deliver you. The same God that transformed me is going to transform you. The same God that changed me is going to change you. The same God that healed me is going to heal you. I've been in a series on the Holy Spirit titled The Life Coach. Because when you begin to understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you'll begin to understand that he is like a life coach to you. Now, I really want to draw this point home because this is like my third week, and it's probably going to go on for another few more weeks. That I'm just going to park it here, but sometimes because of circumstances, people don't come to church every week. So they, don't take, they cannot take advantage of us being in a series, but again, you could always watch online or whatever. So we're laying out a foundation that gets you to understand who the Holy Spirit is. Many people know who God the Father is, many people know who God the Son is, but they don't know who God the Holy Spirit is. They don't know who the Holy Spirit is. But Jesus in the word of God says this, but the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby, all characteristics of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf, this Holy Spirit will teach you all things and will help you remember everything that I have told you. Talking about the life coach, which is the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus walked with his uh, 12 disciples, and he walked with many other followers for three and a half years. They meant everything to him, as you can imagine. He was their provider. He was their protector. He was their comforter. Uh, He held them. He talked to them. He ministered to them. But he was going to go away. He ascended up on high. They felt alienated. They felt alone. They felt abandonment. That their best friend was now gone. But he said, don't worry. I'm sending someone just like me. He's called the Holy Spirit. Up till now, you've not known the Holy Spirit. But he will now not only be upon you, because in the Old Testament, he came upon people. He will now live within you and take permanent residence. And everything that I was to you, this Holy Spirit will now be. So it's important for us to begin to discover then who the Holy Spirit is so that we could take full advantage. The life coach helps you to succeed and fulfill the calling that's on your life. The life coach helps you to make right choices and right decisions. The life coach helps you to navigate through tough times in your life. And the life coach called the Holy Spirit helps to prepare you to see Jesus. He helps his job is so that you can all, we as believers can hear from his lips, Jesus, well done, thou good and faithful servant. It is the life coach that prepares you so that you will hear those words. The life coach. You know, in uh, Genesis, the Bible introduces that God should not be alone. Adam God didn't want him alone. The animals could not occupy. So God says, I'm going to send him a helper. And you that know Genesis 2.18 know what he says. I will send you a helpmate. You just read John 14.26. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is your what? Helper. There's the two words together. Stay with me now. Everything that the Holy Spirit was, this word called paraclete, one called alongside to help, is really what the nature of a spouse is. A spouse, God says, I'm going to give you, who's called alongside of you to help you. So the analogy that he's trying to give us so that we can gain an understanding, because the Bible says we perish for lack of knowledge. You will, you will perish even though all these attributes of the Holy Spirit are available to you, but because you and I might be naive or ignorant, we might be limited and operate in everything that the Holy Spirit has for us. So here's the picture. I have a wife. She is my helper. But for me to take full advantage of her, I need to know what she's good at. 
so that I can gain the help from. So it's my job to get to know Cindy as much as it's your job to get to know the Holy Spirit so you could take advantage and he could be your paraclete, one called alongside, your helper. If not, you'll do life alone. Your choices, your decisions, your troubles, you'll do them alone. So as I think about this analogy, I begin to think, I know my wife. And I know my wife loves to decorate. If you ever came over to my house over any holiday, she changes the house into the theme of whatever that holiday is. She'll even do St. Patrick's Day. Whatever it is, she loves to decorate for those things. My life wife loves to shop. And I'm talking shop with three O's. <laughs> my wife just simply loves to shop. My wife loves her children. She loves her children. But you say, oh, I, I, I know that enough about Cindy. Okay, well, let me tell you how I know her a little bit more. Because you know her that way because you've spent time or you've observed. Now, let me tell you some ways that I know her that you don't know her. She sleeps on the right side of the bed. Did you know that? No, you would never know that. Because you don't have intimacy with my wife. I'm going somewhere with this. Do you know her favorite perfume? No, you don't know her favorite perfume. Euphoria is her favorite perfume. Why? Because I, I know her. She obeys the rules and the laws. She will not jaywalk. Right. <laughs> I'm a lawbreaker, so you figure that out. <laughs> I know this, that she has a right weak knee. Because when she was a little girl, the bus driver slammed on the bus while she was standing up and not sitting and knocked her knee out. How do I know that? Because I'm intimate with her. I've spent time with her. And there are so many things about the Holy Spirit that so many of us have never discovered. Because you've been saved for 50 years. If Cindy didn't do the career choice that we chose, which was ministry, because I took her out of school, so to speak, while she was going to become a stewardess. That was her dream job. She was going to be a stewardess. But just the other day, I discovered something after 35 years of knowing this woman, something I've never known before. She said, if I wasn't a stewardess, I would have been a chef. I said, a chef? Like a cooking chef? She said, yes. And I would have had my own TV program, and I would have just... And I thought, Wow. Something new after 35 years that I've discovered about my wife. Let's begin to discover really who the Holy Spirit is so that we could take full advantage of who he is in all aspects of our lives because he's God's gift to us while we live upon this planet. Hey, thank you for watching. If you're ever in the SoCal, Southern California, LA area. We want to invite you to physically come and be with us. We have a great viewing audience. We have a live streaming audience. We have a Facebook audience. But I'd love to be able to shake your hand, be introduced. So if you're ever in the area, come to one of our many services. But most of all, come up to me because we get really encouraged when we meet our television audience. And don't forget, Easter's just around the corner, Resurrection Day. It's our Super Bowl day for Christians where we celebrate uh, the death, uh, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, which gives us eternal life. Love to see you. Thanks for watching. I'm going to show you 10 symbols of the Holy Spirit today. Each one of those symbols represents something for you to understand and take advantage of. The 10 symbols of the Holy Spirit are there for you to understand who he is and what he wants to be for you in your life. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it says this, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have from God and you are not of your own? The Holy Spirit is, comes in the form of a temple. The Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in a building the Holy Spirit, I, I'm going to offend you a little bit, or is, he doesn't dwell in a church per se. He doesn't dwell within an auditorium. 
He dwells within the body and the mind of believers. He lives within you, not as a visiting guest, but as a permanent resident. The Holy Spirit lives within us as our temple. Now, here's what you need to know about that. There are nice temples and nice bodies and nice uh, minds, and then there's bodies that are full of clutter, chaos, messy, and disrepair. The same way you could see a natural house. How many of you ever seen an orderly house, a clean house, a well-managed house? Now, how many have ever seen a house that's cluttered, broken, messy, and chaotic? Well, so it is in people's lives. Some of our bodies right now are not orderly, well-mannered, manicured. They're full of clutter, and they're messy. I remember when I grew up, my next-door neighbor's house, I'd go and visit it. The, sc- the garage door was broken. The screen, the, 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 the uh, springs of the garage had broken, and they never replaced those, those springs. If you'd go to the front door, there, there used to be a screen door, but it fell off. It was just the remnants of it. And then you'd go to the front door, and the knob was always loose. It was just barely hanging on. Then you open it, and you'd always hear, like the Munsters, the Adams family. And you walked in, and uh, the carpet was ripped up or stained. The tile on the counter was ripped up. The, 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 uh, the faucets were, were broken. Uh, windows were cracked. That was a messy house. The Bible says the Holy Spirit wants to come into you and clean you up. Kind of, get, kind of give you a makeover and refurbish your house. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is to do, to get all the chaos and the messiness out of your life. The second symbol is this. In Acts 2, others mocking said they are full of new wine. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, corrupt, corruption, and stupidity, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. The second symbol is the symbol of wine. As a natural person gets intoxicated with, could get intoxicated with wine or alcohol or liquor, He's trying to draw the analysis that you and I need to be intoxicated or this word. Let me give this word. Under the control and influence of the Holy Spirit. The same way that you would be under the control and influence of wine or alcohol. He wants us to have hope instead of hopelessness. Love instead of hate. Sorrow instead of joy. I'm excuse me. Joy instead of sorrow. Peace instead of worry. Faith instead of fear. Praise instead of pain. And ministry instead of hurt in our lives. When you don't have the wine of the Holy Spirit, you're worried all the time. You're fearful all the time. You're scared all the time. You're angry all the time. You're mad all the time. You're jealous all the time. Your life is hopeless. But when you're filled with wine of the Holy Spirit, there's joy, there's peace, there's happiness. Because usually like natural wine makes you feel good. The Holy Spirit will make your life joyous, where so many people can fight issues from depression and discouragement. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit, the wine of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, I've done some international travel, and I don't do well with international travel. Let me be straight up with you. I've prayed. I've confessed. I've taken natural remedies. And no matter where I travel internationally, my clock is all off. I live off of two and three hours sleep when I go international. I go to bed about 10 and I wake up at midnight and I'm looking at the ceiling. I go at 2 o'clock in the morning to the gym and work out. I was running the streets of of Germany at 3 o'clock in the morning. Because I can't sleep. My body doesn't know when to turn off. And even though I love to travel internationally, it's the part that I do not do well with. Well, I've asked my friends how they travel and what they do. And everybody's different, but one particular friend of mine said, why don't you drink a little bit of wine before you go to bed and it'll knock you out. 
well, I'm not a, I'm not a, a wine drinker. I'm not a, a, I don't drink alcohol. Uh, not that I, 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 I don't believe in it because I believe that moderation is okay. I believe that, now you might get upset with me, but read your Bible, please. Don't judge me until you know your Bible. I will talk to somebody who knows their scripture because you tell me something and I'm going to give you a scripture. It does not ever say it talks about intoxication. The problem with us Americans is we don't know tolerance. We're all drunkards. You go anywhere else, at five years old, they're introduced to caffeine. They're into, and, uh, that's a, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, to talk about your drug. I don't drink alcohol, and how dare the pastor say we can drink alcohol, but I have six cups of coffee, Starbucks a day. You're addicted to you. <laughs> thank you. The, the Holy Spirit just kind of just took over for a minute. You righteous, legalistic Pharisees. Anyway. <laughs> he set you up, didn't you? You were getting stirred up. I'm getting ready to leave this church right now. That I believe in the Bible. The Bible says that if alcohol offends you, then I do not have a right to drink that in front of you because that would be a stumbling block. That's what the Bible says, and that I'm not to be intoxicated. So anyways, so because, of, because I've not drunk an alcohol since 1983, so last time I drank alcohol back then was 83. So I'm on this trip. I preached all week, I'm not, not sleep deprivation. It's my last night there. I, I look at Cindy... Uh, I looked at, a Ashley, you were there, right? I looked at Ashley, and I looked at Adam, and I said, I'm going to have some wine. They, said, they were shocked, because I don't, and I drank. I was knocked out for 11 hours. They called the room and said, where's dad? Is he up running? Is he up exercising? He's still in bed snoring. So here's what I'm telling you. I'm not stupid. The next time I do international travel, I'm going to sleep really, really good. <laughs> Why did I tell you that story? Because there's some of you that are so restless in your life, and the wine of the Holy Spirit will knock you out. Some of you are so terrified and full of anxiety and stress, you can't sleep. But when you get filled with the Holy Spirit through the wine of the Holy Spirit that brings peace into your life and joy into your life, it tells you, I'm in control. Trust me in this matter concerning your children, your finances, or your future. You'll be able to sleep through the night in rest. Hi there. We at Real of Diego Mesa wanted to remind you to like our Facebook page, assuming that you're not already on it. When you join, you'll be able to receive weekly updates on upcoming episodes, live video messages from Pastor Diego himself, and most importantly, you'll be able to interact with tons of people just like you. So hover on over that button on top of our Facebook page and give it a little click. The third symbol is the voice. Now, when I talk about the voice, I'm not talking about the television program where people get discovered and they're singing. I'm talking about the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit talks. And you're not, don't have to be spooky. But he speaks. He speaks. So he comes in the symbol of a voice because he wants to, he wants to talk to you. You know, there, there are some notable voices and all you have to do is hear the voice and you'll know who they are. Luke. I am your father. Well, that's James Earl Jones. Hi, I'm Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Woo! My name is... <laughs> Listen here, you, you pilgrims. Who the heck is that? Chris Tucker. I don't even know how Chris Tucker... Is that his name? They threw... Get Chris Tucker off. He don't make my list. Get him off the next service. I'm just joking. I don't know. How does he talk? Hi, I think he talks real high. I didn't practice Chris Tucker. I'm sorry. He can't be on my list. 
All these are recognized. If the Holy Spirit talked to you, would you recognize him? You'd recognize Arnold's voice. Why wouldn't you recognize the Holy Spirit's voice? All I know is this. People have married wrong people because they didn't recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. People did things outside of the will of God because uh, they didn't know the voice of the Holy Spirit. People have acted out in their flesh because they didn't listen or hear or discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. So notice this. The Holy Spirit is a still, small, quiet, gentle whisper. Call it the voice of your conscience or the voice of your reasoning. But it will come and say, no, or yes, or stop, or go, or do, or don't do, or now, or not now. Notice it says he's a still, small voice. See, you want him to talk like this. He don't talk like that. Because he wants you to get quiet. And too many of us are too loud. Got too many noises around us. He said, you'll never hear my voice. When you got all that noise you're listening to. So turn it off. Turn it down. When you... When you sit across somebody who whispers, it requires you to go, what? And he whispers because he wants you to go, what? He wants you to lean in with intent. The next thing I want you to recognize is the Holy Spirit comes in a dove form, a symbol. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. He comes in the symbol of a dove, soft, innocent, and a white dove. The dove represents peace. The the Holy Spirit wants to bring peace into your life. For all that complaining, for all the criticizing, for the life of judgment that we live, we're always murmuring about something. We're always gossiping about something. And the Holy Spirit has come to bring you peace. So that you don't have to live that lifestyle. The Holy Spirit comes as a dove that's gentle. For everything that's mean in our lives and unfriendly and rude in our lives. Where we are not sensitive to our children or not sensitive to other people or not sensitive to our spouse. The Holy Spirit wants to come in and he wants to make you sensitive. He wants to give you a level of peace. He wants to give you a level of gentleness and he wants to give you a level of purity in your life. If I could take a few moments just to talk about eternity and talk about who we are and how God made us. We all know that we have a physical body. You could look in the mirror, you could pinch yourself. You know you have a physical body. But also, you have a mind. That's your will, your emotions, your intellect but you also are a spirit being. You are made after the image and likeness of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All creation, you could see the work of Trinity within it, from the diversity of water to a bark or a tree, and all the way into creation itself. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you and I die, this body is going to fall to the ground, whether it's in an urn where it's cremated or it's going into a casket. And eventually over, you know, a hundred years, it's going to decay and literally just be a bunch of dirt. Well, I just want you to know when you die, yes, this goes into the ground or begins the decaying process, but your soul, your mind, your will and emotions and your spirit continues to live. So where are you and I going to live if that's the case? So it's like this. I'm going to die and then I'm going to live again. Watch this. I'm going to take off this earth suit and I'm going to die, but then I'm going to step out of this body which falls to the ground, which I just described, and I live again. Where am I going to live? Because I'm still going to have a will and emotions. I'm still going to see things, hear things, talk and feel because the real you is more than just this earth suit, just like astronauts wear uh, you know, a space suit. While you walk upon this planet, let's just say 100 years, you wear an earth suit, but the real you 
continues to live. And it's now going to live beyond this physical world and it's gonna live in a spiritual world or a real world that exists. And I'm just trying to challenge you today. Have you made preparation for that? Where are you going to spend eternity? You're either gonna spend it in the presence of God or outside of the presence of God, but you and I will continue to live. That's what I'm trying to drive to you today. I'm trying to convey that the best way I can. You're gonna live again. And you're gonna live for not only a thousand years, not only a million years, not only a billion years, not only a trillion years, but God's zoopal years, you're gonna live. And you're either gonna live in the presence of God or outside of the presence of God. But the real you, which feels, thinks, sees, hears, and knows is gonna to continue to live. That's the message of the cross. Jesus came to this earth to die, to guarantee your future destiny. See, I only want to follow a man that's been where I'm trying to go. Why would I follow somebody who's never been where I'm trying to go? That's called heaven. That's called outside of this world. That's where his continual spirit and soul continues to live. And I just want to invite you to follow Jesus. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. When you accept Jesus into your heart, you're guaranteeing your future, which is talking about living in the presence of God versus living outside of the presence of God. Living in this place called heaven for eternity where there's joy, a reuniting with your family, there's peace, no sickness nor sorrow, but outside of his presence is suffering because we rejected the sacrifice in the person called Christ today. So repent of your sins, just say this, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come and live in my heart. I thank you today that you died on the cross for my sins. And I thank you that I'm going to live forever in your presence, not outside of your presence. God bless you. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon. Hi there. We at Real of Diego Mesa wanted to remind you to like our Facebook page, assuming that you're not already on it. When you join, you'll be able to receive weekly updates on upcoming episodes, live video messages from Pastor Diego himself, and most importantly, you'll be able to interact with tons of people just like you. So hover on over that button on top of our Facebook page and give it a little click. Hey, thank you for watching. If you're ever in the SoCal, Southern California, LA area, we want to invite you to physically come and be with us. We have a great viewing audience. We have a live streaming audience. We have a Facebook audience. But I'd love to be able to shake your hand, be introduced. So if you're ever in the area, come to one of our many services. But most of all, come up to me because we get really encouraged when we meet our television audience. Just keep coming to church just as you are. But the promise is you're not going to stay the way you are. Because the same God that delivered me is the same God that will deliver you. The same God that transformed me is going to transform you. The same God that changed me is going to change you. The same God that healed me is going to heal you.